Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before your throne. We come lifting you up, come giving your name the glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we exalt you, we magnify you. Lord, you alone is worthy of the praise. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for just being awesome and amazing in our lives. Thank you, O oh God, for bringing a way, making a way out of no way, Lord. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for each and every leader, O oh God. And we ask, dear God, that you cover them under your blood. Father, we pray right now that they put on the full armor of God. Father, that there would be nothing, dear God, that would be able to Im Im penetrate or, uh, or get under their armor, oh God. But, Father, they'd be completely covered in your blood. And, Lord, I pray, dear God, that as I decrease, you increase, so that you would help me speak this word, oh God, to your people. Help them to understand what it is you're saying, oh God. And, Father, we just pray, God, that you just continue to have your way. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, this is our leadership training 103. And tonight we're going to go into a brief discussion of sermon tool. Um, just kind of want to set a quick foundation. And then probably starting next week, we're going to go into the roles and, and different things of that nature. And this probably is going to be several months long. I'm thinking that we won't finish this until probably sometime um, next year. Um, this is a very big series, um, not a series, but a very big lesson and serving to touch so many areas of the church and so many areas, not only in the church, but outside of the church. So I want you guys to have a, a good understanding of what God want for his leaders. Uh, I'm glad that you guys are here. I praise God and thank God for you. I can't do what I do without you. So I'm grateful for you. Titus 3 and 1. Let's, let's start. It says, remind people to be subject to rulers and authority. To be obedient. To be ready. And willing to do good. To slander or, or abuse no one. To be kind in conciliatory and gentle showing unqualified consideration and courtesy towards everyone for we too were foolish disobedient deceived enslaved to various sinful desires and pleasures spending and wasting our time in malice and envy hateful and hating one another but when the goodness and kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared in human form as a man, Jesus Christ saved us. Not because of any work of righteousness that we have done, but because of his own compassion and mercy. By the cleansing of the new birth, the spiritual transformation the regeneration and the renewing by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out richly upon us through Christ Jesus, our Savior, so that we should, we, that we be justified, made free of the guilt of sin by his compassion, undeserved grace, and that we would be acknowledged as acceptable to him and made heirs of eternal life. Actually experiencing it, According to our hope, his guarantee, this is the faithful and trustworthy saying, and concerning these things, I want to speak with you in great confidence, so that those have believed God, that those have trusted and relied on God, and those that accepted Jesus Christ as Savior will be careful to participate in doing good and honorable things. These things are excellent in themselves and profitable for people. 
I want you to understand that, first of all, being a servant is a blessing. I know that when we hear the word servant many times, in a lot of cases, we see it as a negative, but it's not. It's really a positive. If you would remember with me that Jesus himself spoke on how he was a servant. And he spoke on how the fact that those that are servant would be the greatest among those that wasn't. And to, to, to operate in this realm and to flow in this realm, it's, it, it, it's, it works along with the gift of God that he's given you. See, your gift in having the spirit of servitude all entwines together. And it makes you want to do the will of the Lord and to do the things that God created you to do by operating through your gift. So let's look at this. Servitude is the state of being completely submissive to and controlled by someone more powerful. It is the state of being completely submissive to and controlled by someone more powerful. When a person caters to, to every whim and need of another person, this person is an example of someone who would be described as in servitude, a state of subjection to an owner or a master. Now I understand when we hear the word master, Many of us thinking of that will bring us into a, a negative once again. Because many of us remember the days of slavery and the first time, anytime someone hears the word master, we go crazy. But understand that the word master here does not mean the master that the world has twisted and turned and messed up. The world took the Bible and they made it their own. They use things in the Bible to benefit them. The word master there has nothing to do with man. The word master there has a lot to do with Lord, an overruler, the sovereign one, the director, the controller. There are only one master and there's only one Lord of Lords. There's only one God above all and he is God our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we have to understand and recognize that just because we hear this word, this doesn't take us back. This causes us to go into the authority of God. Operating under his authority, he authorizes you to flow in the gift and in servitude to his people. You are authorized by God, okay? And God authorized the, the, the head of the church to authorize you, giving you the power to do what needs to be done as leaders in the ministry. Not only are you authorized on, in the church, but your authorization go beyond the church. Your authorization goes outside of the church. And you will see this as we go into different roles and what needs to be done in these roles. Okay. You, you will hear the word subject a lot. And the word subject simply means one that is in, that has been placed under authority or control. Now, the problem with the with this is that the world doesn't like hearing anything about control. Okay? Nobody wants to be controlled by anyone else. Okay? We want to reign and rule and control our own lives. And we want to do our own thing. But a servant does not do his own thing. Mm. A servant do what the master ordered him to do. Right. A servant do what the father authorized him to do. And anything that he does, that he's tried to do, that the father did not authorize him to do, he is unauthorized. And if he's unauthorized to do certain things, then he also lacked the ability to do it and the backing of God to do what it is that he does. 
This is the reason why you have churches without anointings. Because God does not, if God didn't authorize you to do it, you who are who did? Where did you get your authorization to do what it is that you're doing? If you did not get it from God, and this is why we can't have rogue leaders that runs out and decide to do whatever they feel like doing, because if you have not been authorized to do it, you out of order. And we know that the word tells us to do all things decently and in order. And anytime we get outside of order, you lose your authorization. And once you lose that authorization, you lose your authority. And once you lost your authority, now you can be whipped. You have no power. And when you have no power, you are a prime target for the enemy. You just like a a a a, a, a um, helpless animal or a hurting animal that the enemy pounces and devours. So as leaders, we have to understand the order. And we got to stay under the order. Doesn't matter how anointed you feel you are, you will never be, you will never have the authority to rise above the one that God given you, given authority over you. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. So that means that even if you sound better, even if you read better, even if you uh, 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 tend to have a, a bigger heart, whatever you want to call it, it does not matter because you have not been authorized to reign over the one that God authorized, you have been called to submit under. And again, just like the word servant, submission is another word that we think is ugly. And when we hear this word, we think that, especially in the church, that submission is only for women. But it's a lie. The Bible tells that we all must submit. Men must submit to God. Right. Women must submit to their husbands. If you're married. Women, if you're not married, you submit unto God. So you have to understand that we all submit. And we all got to understand the word submission. The more you can submit, the more powerful you are. The more you submit, the more authority you can handle. And the more authority that you can handle, the more authorization you have. Meaning that your gift now starts to open doors and make room for you so that you can do greater and mightier things for God because you're under the authority of God. Does that make any sense? We cannot do our own thing. And I understand, I know that many of us, we record, we, once we find our gift, we go to running with it. I got my gift. I know what God called me to do. And now all of a sudden, I'm going to be this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this. But you don't understand the danger of running out there with your gift that has not been prepared or matured. You have no idea what you're running into. There are forces, rulers, strategies that set up that we are not, that some of us are not yet matured enough and ready for the handle. There's levels to these devils. There are things that we have to deal with that you have no idea what to do because you have not been authorized to go on that level. That's right. Come on, somebody. To be authorized is also give you the clearance. You're not cleared to be up here. You're not cleared to be on this realm. And if you're not cleared on this realm, you stick out like a sore thumb. And anything that stick out that don't supposed to be, the enemy comes. You draw the attention of the enemy. Makes any sense? So with, with all of that, we have to understand that we are all called to be servants, number one. Even the, even the pastor, even the bishop, whoever, the, even the head of the church, we are all called to be servants. And we are in order to, but in order to serve well, which we all want to should want to do. That should be our desire to serve, not just to serve, but to serve well. Okay? We must be completely submissive to the one who gives us the authority to serve. Remember what Jesus said. Go to John 6 and 38, and I'll tell you what, I'll show you what he said. Jesus is, is our example. Remember? He is, he is what we follow. Anything my, our ministry is going to be, it's going to be 
what crisis was as much as we can possibly emulate Christ. Okay, so whatever Christ did, we should find ourselves doing as well. Remember the Jesus bracelets back in the day. What would Jesus do? And what it was was what it, what the purpose of the bracelet was to teach us to to uh, live a life style like Christ did. So in every situation, we had these braces that would remind us, what would Jesus do in this situation? Well, that should be written on your heart, not just on your wrist. It should be written on your heart to say, okay, in every situation, if, I, if God was here, and if, if God was operating in this situation that I see, what would he do? As a great leader, you have to learn to look at it from God's view and not your own. Because sometimes our own opinion get in the way, right? A lot of times, we, our own opinions are, we are a little too opinionated. And sometimes we see things in the wrong view. But to see it through the eyes of Christ, you can see it the right way. I remember dealing with a situation, and this guy who just, he was just getting on my nerves, man. He was just, I mean, it's like he was just, it's like every time I came in, it was like, ah, blue, 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 you know. And at that time in my life, I wasn't the most playful and happiest person. So it was like, okay, you know, I mean, this guy's going to get the punch that he's deserving. He's going to get the beat down that he wants, okay? And he kept on doing it, he kept on doing it, and he just wouldn't stop. And the moment when I was ready to give him what I thought he was asking for, <laughs> if that make any sense, when I was thinking that I'd give him what, I asked, what he was asking for, when I took my hands and, and get ready to ball them up, I had the Jesus bracelet on back then. <laughs> and I thought about it, and I looked at that bracelet, and I thought that I know Jesus wouldn't punch this dude. So I began to ask God at that moment, God, show me what is this is about through your eyes, because I'm looking at it as somebody that's just picking and driving me crazy. What do you see? What do you need me to look at? If this was you standing here, what would you do? And God gave me a whole other picture of this person. There was a little bit, for lack of a better word, there was a little, I don't want to use this word, um, there was a little touch, if that makes any sense. In other words, there was something not functioning well in their mind. And I didn't see that. I thought it was just a normal individual just picking, you know? But this person had some challenges. Okay, that's the better word. They had some mental challenges. And I would have jumped on someone and, 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 and got into a big thing. And could you imagine how many how people would have looked at me? Like, would you jump on a mentally challenged individual? What type of animal, what type of devil you are to do something that bad, you know? So a lot of times what we have to learn to do is to look at things like Christ look at it. John 6 and 38 says this. He said, For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Now understand, now even Jesus himself was under authority. Now if Jesus, the Son of God, is under authority, when, what in the world do you think we under? We cannot be outside of authority if the, Jesus, the savior of the world, was under authority. He didn't, in other words, he didn't decide to come. He was authorized to come. And God authorized him to come. Now, and when he got here, the people that recognized his authorization had a hard time allowing him to be a servant. When John first saw him, John was like, who? What? You want me to baptize you? No, 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 sir. It's, it should be the other way around. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. Let it be. Suffer this to happen. Let this happen. Because he wanted the world to see that he was a servant. There was times where, where Jesus washed his, uh, the disciples' feet. And they was uncomfortable with it. Because they said, wait a minute. You're the leader. You're the authority. Why in the world would you be doing that? Well, what Jesus was trying to show us back then the power of being a servant. The authority that he operated under. He didn't have to feel just because he had authority that he had to exercise it all the time. Or he had to throw it out there and prove to everybody who he was. See, as true servants, 
You understand your authority and you can walk in your authority without being prideful or lifted up. You don't have to walk up with your head up and, and looking down on everyone else. Now, who has the authority to look down on us all? Was Jesus. He sits high and look low. But regardless of how high he sits and look low, he still caught himself. He, he came down in the flesh of a man. Just a normal person. So we have to learn this principle. Go to 1 Peter 5 and 1. So when once again, to operate in, as a servant, you got to have the heart of a servant. And to have a heart of a servant, you got to exit out everything out of you, pour out everything out of you that will cause you not to serve well. That's right. Mm -hmm. That means we got to do some checks and balances. That means I got to check myself. You know, there was an old saying back in, the, I think, in the 80s. It said it was a sin that said, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, just show you how old I am. But <laughs> you have to understand and recognize that we have to do some checks and balances to make sure that we are serving well. Meaning that I'm not serving because I want clout. I'm not serving because I want a title. I'm not serving because I want everybody to follow me. I'm not serving because I'm looking for something out of it. I'm serving because I because it is a, a command and this is something that God asked of me to do and I'm doing it because he asked me to do it. Looking for nothing in return. Just simply under the authorization of God without looking for anything in return. You wouldn't believe how many people do what they do just to get behind this pulpit. But if you knew what it costs to get behind here, you would stay sitting out there, trust me. Because there's times I want to go back out there and sit down, okay? So you have to understand and recognize you got to have a heart for it. You have to have the right heart for it. And you have to ask God constantly to check my heart, check my motives, God, check my mindset, God. Another issue with leaders is sometimes they want it for because the, they, they want the power. Because they know where power comes other things. Some men do it to attract women. Some women do it to attract men, money. And we do these things for all the wrong reasons and wonder why God won't get behind it and give you no anointing with it. And then one is why you're standing there saying and doing all of these things and nobody feeling and experiencing anything. And because you are, you went and you were not sent. Mm. Notice what Jesus said. He said, I came, I, I was sent to the world. He didn't just get up and walk. They didn't say that. He didn't say, you know what, God, I don't, I ain't no worry about your plan. I ain't digging what you do. I'm going out here to save these people. No, him and the father was in agreement with him being sent. You have to be sent. Or you will get to a hospital, lay hands on somebody, and there will be no, there, this person may not be healed. You may pray for someone and they don't stay and nothing change in their life. You may do things that God called, that, you, that is good and not see any power behind it because you went in your own authority. You may go out and feed the homeless just for them to slap the sandwich out of your hand. Just for them to look at you and say, get away from me. You're trying to say you're better than me. And the reason why is because we do things because we won't show. You know, especially in these days and time. And these days and time, we do it just to put it on camera. And let me ask you, let me tell you something. Those that put things on camera, that's your reward. That's it. God is not going to get behind that. You're only doing it because you want more likes. More followers. Don't you understand God knows that? God knows that you're doing it for that reason and that reason alone. If the camera was off, would you still do it? If it was done in the dark and nobody seen it, would you still do it? If you won't be praised about it, would you still do it? That's how you know you're a true servant. First Peter 5 and 1 says this. Therefore, I strongly urge the elders among you, pastors, the spiritual leaders of the church as a fellow elder 
and the eyewitnesses witness called to testify of the suffering of Christ as well as one who shares in the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherds and guides, I mean, shepherds guide and protect your flock of God among you, exercise oversight not under compulsions, but voluntarily according to the will of God. Now, in other words, do it with the right heart, do it, do it the right way, do it because God told you to do it, not simply trying to get nothing out of it. Okay. It says, not lording it over those assigned to you, but care for them. Be an example for them. To be an example to your flock. Set a pattern of inner, uh, 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 integrity for your congregation. And when the chief shepherd, Christ, appears, you will receive the conqueror's unfailing crown of glory. Mm. See, that's, your, that's when your reward comes. Likewise, you younger men of lesser rank and experience, be subject to, the, to your elders. Seek their counsel in all of you. Now, 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 for your younger leaders, there are leaders that have been where you're going. And these are the ones you want to seek counsel from. Because they can tell you when to duck. <laughs> they can tell you when to, not to fight this one. They can tell you Pray like this. They can tell you, avoid that. They can counsel you and because you're going the same path that they went. So you have to learn to uh, submit yourself to that, to them. It says, also clothe yourself with humility towards one another. Learn how to be humble towards each other. For God is opposed to the proud but he give grace to the humble God has a problem with pride for, pride for people God has a problem with people that think they're something when they're nothing when they forget that the only good thing about them is Christ that's in them they forget that if it wasn't for Christ they'd be a sinner just like they are sinners if it wasn't for Christ they would be they would be heading to a place that wasn't designed for them just like everyone else that have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord so we have to not forget and it says to remember to do it humbly meaning doing it with the right attitude doing it because you love people yeah that's so so these people that comes to the congregation they're going to be under you okay far as your rank but do, do that mean just because they under me that I'm supposed to treat them like nothing? Because you never know the call on their life. The call on their life may have them above you one day. So it's your job to teach them how to be humble so when they get up there, they won't fall. That's right. That's right. The reason why so many leaders have failed because there wasn't fathers in the gospel. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot of fathers and the, the father that was in the gospel, they didn't go to them. They went out and did their own thing. So instead of going to the fathers that is, that's already been in the gospel that know how to follow them and teach them and show them the ways to go, they went up there on their own and now they fail and now they're trying to figure out how in the world did I get here? Because we could have told you about the booby traps. We could have told you about the, 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 the temptations that comes with ministry. We can tell you about the things that we can let you know why that sister is really looking at you funny when you think that she's just being cool. We can tell you what messages and how to present your messages before the people of God instead of trying to put, try to do it watered down so that you can receive offerings. We can tell you the truth if you will just go to the fathers that God has already established in the Bible. The problem is, is that we're too prideful to do it. We, that takes humbling. It's, it takes humbling to go to a man that sometimes is younger than you and ask them to be the father over you and the father of your ministry. Sometimes it's not about age, it's about maturity. It's not about how, how, how old a person is, it's about how long that person walked with the Lord. Come on, somebody. So I want you... 
Let's get. I'm, let's go back real quick. Let's go back to. Um, I want to go back to Titus three and one. Go back to it real quick. Let's finish that up. We're we're, we're Titus three and nine. Titus three and nine. I want to finish that. Again, I'm just trying to set a foundation tonight, and then we'll go into this more on the next couple verse. I mean, the next couple uh, sessions. But I need you to really get what God is saying. If you are in this room, then you are called to be a, a leader. If you're listening to this, you're probably called to be a leader. And if you're called to be a leader, then these are things that you got to get now because there's too many of our leaders falling. I'm watching it happen every single day and it hurting my heart because somebody ain't told them what, they, what, what they're going to face. And many of them getting there and not understanding what this is now that they're there. A lot of them are surprised about what's happening because nobody told them that there are pitfalls, man. There are, there's all types of holes around. There's types of not, you know, holes that you can fall in. <laughs> not the other one. Don't, don't, don't get that twisted up. So you have to understand and recognize that there are situations and issues around don't start. <laughs> Situations and, and issues around that can get us all tied up and twisted up and messed up. Amen? 3 and 9 says this. I need you to avoid foolish and ill-informed and stupid controversies and genealogies and dissensions and quarrels about the law. For they are unprofitable and, un and useless. 10. After a first and second warning, reject a divisive man who promote her uh, heresy and cause dissension. Ban him from your fellowship and have nothing more to do with him. After being warned, see, God warns you a couple times. He gives you a shot, He gives you an opportunity to stop the garbage. The Bible tells us that if one of your leaders, give them a couple times, but then disconnect. Put them out of the congregation. That's what the rest of it says. It says, ban him from your fellowship, have nothing more to do with him. Well aware that such a person is twisted and is sinning, he is convicted and self-condemned and they're gratified by causing confusion among believers. In other words, back away. You have to understand that many of us that were qualified get disqualified because we go and do what we want to do instead of what we was called to do or what God tells us to do. You can't do your own thing. Because this thing that you are in, it doesn't belong to you. You don't even belong to you. We all belong to God who paid a price for each and every one of us. So you have to understand, since I don't belong to Christ, I mean, I'm sorry, since I don't belong to myself, I've been bought with a price, then that means everything about me was bought with that same price. That means my ministry, Everything that's connected to me. So always remember this. That you do not ever want to go outside the will of God. You don't ever want to do things in your authority and not God's authority. Because your authority has no power. And without any power, then the devil does not have to submit or listen to you at all. The only reason what gives us power is the name of Jesus. That's, right. That's the authority. It ain't your name. No matter how many times people want to use their name, oh, I'm, I'm bishop this, and I'm, I'm pastor this, and I'm deacon this, and I'm, I'm this, and I'm that. Listen, your name carries no power. The power is in the name of the one that you submitted your life to. The one that you've given your life to, who has given you the authority to have his power. And he give it to you. And as you mature more and more and more. Because too much power.
can cause damage not only to the enemy, but to you as well. Come on, stand. Father God, we thank you for the introduction of this tonight. And we pray, Lord, that as we go forward more and more, that we understand the role of the leaders and what you called us to do in this earth and in this time. Father, we're excited about this because we know that this is not taught. And we thank you that it's out there now and that it has been taught and that others have seen and heard and that many, O oh God, will begin to understand the purpose of teachings like this. And that those that have leaders will set their leaders down and begin to teach them over again on how and why it's important to be a leader and what it's all about. Lord, we thank you for helping us being better leaders, greater leaders. And if there are any areas, oh God, that's unchecked, check us out. Check our hearts, Lord, and remove anything that will cause us to not operate as true leaders unto you. We need your authority to do what we do. And most of all, we need your power. Help us to be effective in everything that we do for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you listen to this, and you are a leader, go back and listen to um, um, Leadership Training 102 and Leadership Training 101. Um, these, these trainings will truly help you in your church. It will hurt you, help you with your role. And if you are believing that God is calling you into leadership, then it also will help you in those areas as well. I pray that you got something from this and I ask that you like and subscribe to the video if you have not already. And we love you and we'll see you on the next one. God bless you. God bless you.